Stephanie Denman here from the Denman Homestead and today we are going to do this whole seven day series about sourdough starter. Now I'm going to be, when I release this video, it's going to have all seven days together so you won't have to worry about going back and finding day two, day three, day four, all of that. So this is going to be the start of day one baseline. And then by the end of the video, we should have a ready-to-go sourdough starter from scratch. So if you've not already had a sourdough starter before or um, you're just now getting into sourdough, or if you're just curious on how sourdough is made, this will be a video that you'll want to pay attention to and watch. So I have a sourdough starter that I have had for a while now. Her name is Megan. And... All the sourdough enthusiasts will tell you, if you have a starter, you end up naming it. Just uh, some people name it. I've, I've seen some really funny names. Um, but Me Megan here was named after one of my really good friends, Megan, uh, who is super bubbly and vivacious and just fun. And when I, my sourdough starter started to bubble up, I was like, oh, my sourdough is getting bubbly. And it reminded me of Megan. So I was like, that's it. That's, her, that's the inspiration. Her name's Megan. So... My starter Megan here has been with me, and uh, I'll show you what she looks like right now. I pulled her out of the fridge the other day. Um, I have this rubber band here so that I can kind of monitor where my where the um, starter was before I fed it, and then when it starts to rise, I kind of move the secondary band up. Oh, it's kind of blurry there. Um, I move the secondary band. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it just kind of makes it easier to know that your your starter has doubled in size. So that's why I have two bands on this one. Um, or you can get a little marker, like a dry erase marker or something. Anything that helps you to know where, uh, where it was and then where it's risen to. This one actually, this is kind of, it's coming back down from uh, being fed yesterday. So this is almost back to baseline. Um, but you can tell on the sides how high it went when I fed it. It got pretty high up here. So um, that's why I've got these bands on here. But this is Megan. And I'll show you how I started Megan. And I feel like a sourdough starter can be very overwhelming. There's a, um, I don't know, kind of a stigma around it being super technical and hard to do. And I will tell you that I've tried to do sourdough in the past and failed. Like, I, it's, it was two weeks and nothing was happening. And there was no activity and it smelled funky and weird and had a really weird, it just wasn't, it wasn't doing anything really. Um, and then I, I ended up tossing it and then just kind of like giving up for a while and I started again. And I kind of played around with different, I got a book to read on sourdough and it was very mathematical, very technical, kind of over my head. Um, then I started doing some research online and you know, just, but I'll tell you what my number one problem was. My number one failure, I think. It was. I, I read and researched, you need a one-to-one -one ratio, one-to-one -one ratio of your flour and your water. That's it, one-to-one. -one. So when I think one-to-one, -one, I think of like when I do sugar water or for my bees or when I cook rice and I need like one part rice, two cups, two parts water, whatever it may be. You know, you think of those measurements. But what I wasn't taking into consideration is I need a one-to-one -one weight ratio. So I was doing a one cup flour to one cup water ratio and I was having a really hard time with my starter. So when I switched it up and I did a 60 gram ratio to a 60 gram of water ratio, that is when my starter actually took off and started doing really well. Um, so learn from my mistakes and give yourself a break and you'll have really great results if you get yourself a scale, a digital scale, very cheap. This is like 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, get yourself a scale so that you can properly weigh out your ingredients and it will help you in the long run. I, not to say that people haven't had success doing a one cup to one cup 
ratio. Um, they may, but it took, it didn't work for me and maybe I didn't give it enough time, but this will give you a very good result very quickly. Um, and you won't have to worry so much about, am I doing it wrong? And I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to show you exactly what I did for Megan. And that way you can follow along with me every single day and do what I do so that you can get similar results. I will tell you, temperature where you're at right now does make a difference. So if you do this in the summertime versus the winter time, you may have a slower um, fermentation process. Uh, yeast tends to need a warm, wet climate to, to really bloom and, and grow. Um, if it's cold, it's gonna take a really long time. So, uh, for example, when all this is said and done, you can stick your ready-to-go sourdough starter after you've, you've got it going really good in the refrigerator, and you won't have to feed it for a while, uh, sometimes weeks. You won't have to feed it because it lays dormant in the refrigerator. So it's not gonna be a a as active as it is room temperature or in warm climates. So keep that in mind whenever you're starting your starter. If it is winter time for you, um, you may need to start it, you know, put it in your oven with the light on, somewhere where it's gonna get a little bit of warmth um, to help that environment grow. What is sourdough starter? Sourdough starter is a natural wild yeast found in the environment. We have bacteria and yeast all over all the time, including in our flowers, um, on surfaces, on our skin. Um, it's beneficial and it carries different strains of um, bacteria that will ferment and you take that yeast and you use it in place of something that you would get at the store, like a dry yeast, you know, those little packets. Um, you use that in place of the dry yeast. Uh, for example, during the shutdown, that pandemic, uh, yeast packets, I don't know if you paid attention, but they were expensive. They went from like $1.25 for a pack of four to like seven bucks. Uh, because everyone was kind of hoarding and, and getting all these like homemade in, homemade ingredients because there was no bread on the shelves. People were resorting to trying to make their own food um, out of sheer panic. If you know how to make your own starter, then you don't need those yeast packets from the store because that replaces the yeast packets that you would add in from the store. So, no longer do you need your little yeast packet, you can use sourdough starter for your yeast. It just takes the place of that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. What you're gonna need is a clean jar of some type with like a lid or cloth, um, something that you can cover it with. Um, sw these swing top uh, rubber seal jars are really good. Just know that um, if your starter gets too big for the jar, it may explode. So you want to make sure that you're going to start off with a, enough to where it can double, maybe even triple in size without your jar getting under too much pressure and exploding. If you're afraid of that, if you're afraid or um, don't want to risk that, you can always put this in like a gallon Ziploc baggie. That way if anything does happen or the seal pops off and it overflows, you're not stuck with a big mess. It's just going to be contained in that Ziploc baggie. Um, but so get yourself a jar with a lid. I have two little bowls here because I'm going to put one with flour, one with water. And day one, this is a seven day process, day one we're going to start off with whole wheat flour, okay? This is organic whole wheat flour. The main thing that you're going to want to remember is you can start with all purpose flour, you can start with whole wheat flour, rye, um, bread flour, just make sure that it's um, unbleached. If it's bleached flour, you... Um, 
it may kill off some of those natural enzymes and yeast that you really need to help with uh, the fermentation process. Keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna start with whole wheat flour for day one. Um, I feel whole wheat flour has a lot of, um, well, whole nutritious benefits in it that help kickstart the food and nutrition that this yeast needs to grow. Some natural sugars in it. Um, some of that is refined out when you get to your uh, all-purpose flour. Uh, so I'm going to start off with just day one with some whole wheat flour. Again, you can start off with all-purpose flour and it should be fine, but I see the best results starting day one with this whole wheat flour. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scale and I'm going to zero it out. <clears throat> and I'm going to put it on grams. And just for whole number purposes today, I'm going to do 100 grams of whole wheat flour and 100 grams of water. So I'm just going to spoon on here some flour. I'm not going to worry about sifting it or anything. I'm just going to spoon this until I reach 100 grams. shows 100 grams in my bowl. Let me show you what how much flour this is. Okay, this is 100 grams of whole wheat flour. I do recommend using a wide mouth jar or even a larger jar than wide mouth if you can. Um, anything smaller than that is gonna be difficult to mix and it's gonna be difficult to um, take out half because we are gonna be, I'll talk to you about this in a minute, but it's called discarding. So uh, to, to get out the sourdough, it's gonna be more difficult if you have a smaller jar opening. got our 100 grams. I'm going to write this down on a sticky note. It's going to make it a lot easier to remember your measurements later on. Starting day one, we have 100 grams whole wheat flour. Okay? Now, let's fill up our little bowl with 100 grams of water. Okay. I'm going to show you the difference in size. So if you remember what the flour looked like, this is the amount of water you'll need. This is 100 grams of water. Okay, so if I were just to be doing a equal amounts one to one, one cup and one cup, I would have a whole lot more water than I really truly needed. Okay, so I'm going to Pour my, this, and by the way, I used just warm tap water from my sink. Um, if you live in an area where you've got like a water treatment facility and it's got like chlorinated water um, or treated water with like fluoride and all that, uh, just use bottled water or filtered water from your refrigerator. Just make sure that it comes to room temperature or maybe lukewarm um, because again, yeast um, likes warm environments. You just don't need it too, too hot or you will kill off. Ideally, you want it around like 100 to 110 degrees uh, if you want to get technical with it, but just make it, you know, body temperature water uh, for your, when you mix. So, I poured the water directly on top of the whole wheat flour, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the spatula here, and I'm going to stick this wooden spoon this wooden end of it in the bottom, and I'm just going to give it a really good mix. And I'm going to make sure I'm scraping the bottom because the flour tends to like to stick in those little nooks and crannies in the corners. Stick in it in all those little corners, mixing it really well. And it's going to be a pretty thick consistency. Some people like to compare it to pancake batter. I don't 
compare it to pancake batter. Pancake batter to me is pourable. This is not a pourable solution. And I will show you what it looks like. This is like a stiff cake batter, if you ask me. I'm not a baker, so I don't know like super technical terms, but this is what it looks like. It's sticky, it's thick, it's not pourable. So, it's, and you can look on the bottom of the glass, it's all completely combined and mixed. And um, now what you wanna do is you just take the end of the stick and kinda like rub it, up, peel it off the bottom of that, and let it drop to the bottom of the jar. And then I take my spatula side and I just kinda clean up the edges and I push it all down. That way it's easier to see a rise and you don't see all that kind of messy bits that you you got on the edges of the jar. And it's all combined at the bottom of the jar. Okay? Don't forget to write on your sticky note Day one, 100 grams of water. Then right underneath that, you're gonna write day two, nothing, do nothing. I'm writing N-A, because day two, we're not gonna do anything with this. This is gonna sit with the lid on, just like this. Day two, I'll go ahead and uh, record and let you see what it looks like, but I'm not gonna mess with it at all. I'm not gonna add anything to it. So, it's gonna sit like this, get to know each other. Um, that yeast is gonna start to eat on those natural sugars. Um, it's gonna start to get kind of, it might get some bubbles on it, um, depending on how warm your environment is. Um, if it doesn't bubble right away, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it um, because it will, depending on the flour that you have and the environment and the water you use. So don't be discouraged if you see no bubbles by the end of day two, okay? Because the hope is by day seven, you will see that your, your starter is rising and falling, and that's what we want. And even if by day seven, because I've told you before, I've gone over two weeks with inactivity of nothing going on. Um, it doesn't mean that your starter is bad. It just means that you need to have a little bit more patience with that starter or while that one's taking its sweet time, maybe experiment with a different type of flower. Um, test it out, maybe it's the flower. So this is day one, that's all you do with your brand new sourdough starter. What will you need moving forward? Moving forward, all I'm gonna use is, what I'm gonna to use to feed this starter is all-purpose flour. So I had the whole wheat to begin with to start, but going forward, all I'm gonna do is use uh, unbleached all-purpose flour to feed my starter. And um, what we're gonna do is, I'll go ahead and tell you, not to overwhelm you, but to give you a heads up, we are going to, on day three, discard half of what's in this jar. So we're gonna get our, our little scale out because right now we have 200 grams of combined ingredients. We have 100 grams water and 100 grams flour. So we have a 200 gram combined weight of ingredients. We're going to discard half of that. So in a bowl, on a scale, we're gonna scoop out 100 grams of this solution, this yeast mi mixture. Then we're gonna add in what we took out. This is where it kind of gets a little bit of like overwhelming, but if, if you just follow, trust the process. So we took out 100 grams of the water and flour, so we need to put 100 grams of water flour back in. So math, 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 and you guys know I hate math, but I can do this, okay? So then we're gonna put 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of warm water back in here. Okay, so it's gonna feed it again with fresh 
water and flour the, and bring it back up to 200 grams total weight. Are you with me? Are you following me? Okay, so that's what's coming up. So it's really not as complicated as it seems and if I can do it and I'm horrible at math, like I cry with my children during math homework time, that kind of horrible at math, you can do this. Like. It is, it's, it's, once you get the hang of it, it's super simple, super easy, and very satisfying when you can make your own sourdough bread. So, believe me, trust the process. Okay, so, we're on day one. Day two, remember, I'll bring you back just to look at it, but we're not doing anything with it until day three. Now, you might have heard me say the word discard. So, discarding means to, that's what it is, you discard, you throw it out, you throw it away half of your sourdough starter. Now, if you want to, you can save that discard, um, this initial discard that we're gonna do and start another starter with it. So, because it's still an active yeast and all of that, you can take that half that you're gonna throw out, put it in another jar and feed it just the way that you would this one. So you have two different starters. That's up to you if you wanna do that. I suggest that this is your first rodeo, your first go around, just throw it out, don't worry about it. That way you have your one started starter to worry about and you know, we'll, we'll deal with this one and we'll, um, you can experiment with that, that discard later, up to you. Um, I'm gonna set this out in a, not in the fridge, I'm gonna set it out on the corner. Make sure you put it somewhere where that you'll see it every day because if it's sitting out on the, court, on the counter or in a cabinet, um, you're going to need to continue to feed it daily uh, or it will eventually die and go rancid. Once your starter is established and it's good to go, you can stick it in the refrigerator for weeks at a time, pop it back out, feed it, set it on the counter, let it ferment and do that, do its thing um, and it'll come back to life and you can use that starter. But don't put this in the, do not put your brand new starter in the fridge right now. You want to keep it on the counter where you can see it and you can feed it daily um, when you're getting it going. Okay, so now that we've covered that, once your starter is established after the seventh day or after you know that your, your sourdough starter is good to use, um, the discard portion of that sourdough, you can actually bake with it. Don't bake with this brand new starter's um, discard. The brand new starter doesn't have enough uh, good bacteria in it yet. It's still developing. Um, the fermentation process, it's not going to be good to bake with. Eventually, you can bake with a discard. Uh, there's so many different, if you just Google uh, sourdough discard recipes, there's a ton of things that you can do with the discard so that it doesn't go to waste. Um, so we'll get to that point. We will get there. Uh, again, I don't want to overwhelm you because right now we're just day one with our brand new baby starter. Make sure you name it. Uh, that's, that's imperative, okay, for it to work. So, um, we're gonna, we're gonna come back and I'll show you tomorrow on day two what it looks like and then, uh, we'll go from there. But, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so this little band here is what I put on here so I knew where it originally was at just in case it decided it wanted to bubble at all. So it is, it is a little bit um, starting to ferment. So you're seeing a little bit of bubble action um, going on. And that's a good sign. It means that um, there's some yeast and bacteria and all that stuff that is needed in order for this to be a good starter. So again, it's day two, so we're not gonna do anything with it. We're gonna let it just sit and be um, and then tomorrow, day three, we will discard half and then we will replace it with some all-purpose flour and some water. Um, but yeah, that's what it's looking at, like on day two. And if yours doesn't look that way or if there's no bubbles at all, don't worry about it. Um, it still is perfectly fine. We're just going to trust the process and keep going. All right, day three. Now let's take a look at it. Remember... We have not touched this at all. We have not opened it. We have not added anything to it from day one. Yesterday was day two. We just let it sit and do its thing, and it did a thing. 
right? So um, I think this whole wheat flour is really good for getting that boost of energy to get it going. But don't let it fool you because it will fall flat um, and it won't be this energetic because it's got, it's working through some stuff. It's developing um, different flavors, different yeast strains, different bacteria. So when we feed this, we're gonna discard half and feed this. Don't be alarmed if it doesn't bounce back the way it does, it looks like right now. Just hang in there. Okay, so day three, now remember, we started with 100 grams of water and 100 grams of whole wheat flour. Today, day three, we're going to feed this with 50 grams of all-purpose flour and 50 grams of lukewarm water. But that means that we need to discard 100 grams of this starter. So discard 100 grams, replace 100 grams. But the 100 grams is split between the two. 100, uh, 50 grams of warm water, 50 grams of all-purpose flour. Can you go ahead and continue feeding it with whole, uh, whole wheat uh, flour? Yes, you can, but just, just know that whatever flour you're going to use your starter with, um, or the, the primary flour that you're going to have your starter with, is um, that's going to be the flavor that you're going to that's going to shine through in your your breads. So if you use an all whole wheat starter, then you're probably going to have more of an, a whole wheat taste, and that's fine if you if you're good with all whole wheat. Um, I like to use an all purpose because um, it's pretty versatile. I can use it for a whole bunch of different things, and um, that whole wheat doesn't really translate into everything. So I'm just going to scoop out 100 grams. So I've got 100 grams here. And now I'm going to add in on my scale, 50 grams of all-purpose flour, I've got 50 grams of all-purpose flour. I'm going to get this in here. Okay, now I've got 50 grams of water, warm water, and I'm going to add it to this, and I'm going to mix it all up. So half of that original starter is still in here, and it's being fed now by fresh flour and fresh water. Let me show you what it looks like out of the jar. So, you see it? Sticky. Smells like wet bread. starter starts to grow mold or smells really really bad um, throw it away you may notice that your starter has a like a, a um, forming some liquid on the top of your starter that's actually called hooch it is an alcohol formed by the yeast and um, the fermentation process of the sourdough so sometimes when your sourdough is starved for food, it'll create that layer of um, hooch on top. You can pour that out. Some people mix it back in. 
I tend to just pour it off before I um, discard and add anything else to my to my starter. So now I'm just going to scrape down the sides and clean up this jar a little bit and we're going to set it back on the counter and we will do this exact same thing tomorrow and the next day and the next day and then um, by day seven we'll check it and see what it's looking like. It might be ready to use, it might not. We'll see. So hang in there with me and uh, we'll get this one going. Okay guys, so technically today is day five. However, my dog ate the flour. I'm not even lying. My dog ate my flour yesterday. <laughs> so I had to go buy more flour and I missed a day. And guess what? That's okay. Um, not all is lost. So I'm going to take remove this. There are some bubbles on top still. So show you what we look like for day five with a missed feeding. Still smells okay. We're gonna get rid of 100 grams of starter and replace it with 50 fresh flour and 50 fresh water. Okay, we're right at 100. Let's get 50 grams. And I'm still using all-purpose flour. Now let's do 50 grams of warm water. 50 grams warm water. We're going to use the end of our spatula. Stir, stir, stir. So we're gonna call this day five, um, and we're just gonna keep an eye on it, monitor it, and see see how it uh, bounces back. So we might be delayed by a day or so um, with fermentation, or it could just pick right back up and be a rock star and keep on keeping on. So we'll just keep an eye on it, keep feeding it, and just keep with it. That's the thing, don't give up, even if you think Nothing is happening, just keep with it. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides again. If your jar starts to get real kind of crusty, crusty, musty, like my kids like to say, crusty and musty, uh, you can transfer this to a clean jar if you'd like. Right now mine's still okay. We're gonna put it on the counter and wait for it to ferment. I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow. Okay, today's day seven. It's actually pretty late in the evening. Um, so this is our seventh day to feed. So hopefully by tomorrow we may see some more activity. I can definitely see some bubbles on the top. Um, it did rise a little bit yesterday after the, the feeding we did then. And I actually think I'm going to go ahead. Do you see those bubbles on the top? I'm going to go ahead and transfer this into a clean mason jar. Um, and once your jar kind of starts to get a little cruddy, you may want to transfer it into a clean one. Um, but again, today we're going to discard half and then replace it with 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of warm water. And then tomorrow we'll see if it's ready to bake with or not. And if it's not ready to bake with, that's okay. We're going to continue to feed it. Um, but I just want to give you the full disclosure of the process that we're going through. So let's transfer it to a clean jar. And since we're transferring it to a clean jar, it'll be easy to discard the other half. All right, got my 100 grams of starter here, so I'm gonna add 50 flour. And then 50 warm water.
fresh, clean jar. We'll just sit and wait. Okay, we have reached the very last day of our seven day starter. And our starter has actually risen a little bit from day six, and I'll show you. Where the little black band is is where um, the starter, when we mixed it, that's where it was at. And it's risen, I don't know, maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch up. So that's a really great indication that the fermentation and the development of this yeast is working. So we are going to continue to feed it until it has doubled in size. So hopefully this next feed will really give it that what it needs to get get going um, but if not we see progress here already so just keep with it sometimes like I said before it can take two weeks to get your yeast started so um, this is just giving me hope that we're on the right track uh, so I'm gonna measure out like before we're gonna discard and feed We're gonna stir this all together. We're gonna see what happens. All right, we've made it to the end, maybe. So this is what it looks like. Technically, I guess we're day eight. Um, I have not fed it yet. So it's in the afternoon and it's bubbly on top. Let me open it up. So th this is it. This is a. Uh, this is how you start your starter. Let's look in here. Mmm, smells pretty good. So, um, one way to know to test if your starter's peak, like to use, to actually bake with, is something called a float test. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a little jar of water and just a little bit of your starter, and I showed this on my actual baking bread recipe. Um, so once you've got your starter going, go back to that sourdough bread episode and you can see how I use my sourdough starter to make sourdough bread. Um, and I just took a little bit on my spoon here, just a little bit, and I'm just going to drop it in the water. And if it floats, then you know that your sourdough starter is ready to use to bake with. And it is floating. So that's how you know. That's how you know it's peak, it's peak time. So this is a perfect starter to use to bake with. Once it's deflated, meaning that it's eaten pretty much everything it needs to eat, all the flour, all the sugars, and all the yeast, um, don't, don't bake with a deflated starter. Go ahead and feed your starter to where it rises or doubles in size, and that's what you want to bake with. Once you bake with it, remember to re replace what you took out and feed it again. Um, so thank you guys so much for hanging in there with me to make this starter from scratch. I know one of those days is a little confusing with, I lost track of time, but um, this is it. This is all you need to do. It's very simple, very easy. Follow this. I even, I even couldn't feed one day because my dog ate my flour and it still turned out great. So if I can do it, you can do it. And I hope you do. And if you do, try it out. Let me know how it goes. And uh, good luck on everything and happy baking. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.